Hey everybody, welcome to the Unsilent Patriots. We are testing audio right now. Am I showing live on Facebook? All right, so let me go here, go live. There we go. All right, everybody, we have got the audio rolling. We are live on Facebook and YouTube tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I am so glad that you're here. I'm so excited about this broadcast tonight. Uh, we have Lilith Venetian from, she's a school teacher. She's amazing. And she is going to be on with us in just a moment. Thank you guys so much for joining. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the truth about our education system and not just the truth about education, but what we can do to fix it, because we all know it's a disaster, right? And so I, I'm bringing Lilith on because she has fantastic insight as being a teacher herself. Trust me, she's an amazing, amazing patriot, and you guys are going to love her energy. I want to remind you guys before we get started, please like and share this stream, whether it's YouTube or Facebook. Um, everyone that's watching live should like and share the stream. That's how we beat the algorithm. I woke up today off of social media. Right Side Broadcasting was suspended from YouTube today. Um, they suspended all of President Trump's videos from any, any platform. And so we are being censored hardcore. The only way we can get the message out is us, me, you, everyone working together to share the truth and make sure it gets out. And that's how we override their algorithm. So thank you guys so much for being here. I am going to bring Lilith in now. Let's see. Lilith, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. Thanks for having me, Ashley. You guys, I wanted Lilith to come on the show because her energy is absolutely incredible. I don't know if you guys follow her. You can see her screen name there on the screen, but she is a fireball. And you guys know here on this channel, we don't like people who are filtered. We like people who speak <laughs> their mind and say what they want to say. And I promise you, Lilith is not going to disappoint you guys tonight. You're not either. You're a fireball yourself. You're like everywhere. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly so excited to have you. I've been looking forward to this oh, interview, I as you know. I've been messaging you. I'm and excited stuff, too. So. Um, so let's just get started. Um, I want to. I didn't send you this ahead of time. This is not part of our conversation, but I just want to get your initial thoughts. What the heck is going on with censoring Dr. Seuss? And the Muppets and all of this yeah. stuff. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So the Dr. Seuss crap started here in Virginia. Um, and everybody else just like took suit. They're like, oh, that's woke. We should do the same thing. Like if they were to ban, I don't know, like red ink pen or black ink pen or something like that. Like, sure, that, that'll that be the next woke thing that everybody follows, you know, in line. So I don't know. Nothing surprises me anymore. I don't let it get to me anymore because like I said, tomorrow they could ban, you know, Tic Tacs. Like, Yeah, it's like, and I don't want to get too far in this because as you know, my channel will get yanked down, but it's like the mask thing. Mm -hmm. We went from like one mask to two masks. And like, I saw someone, I think it was, uh, I don't remember who on Twitter, but they're like, I honestly believe if like Dr. Fauci came out and said, we have to wear like tie dye mask, like people would be all out like tie dyeing their mask because yeah. they're just like, whatever, whatever the woke culture is saying, like, we've got to follow it. So we don't get, so we don't get canceled yeah. or so we won't hurt anyone else. Others hurt anyone else's feelings. Yeah. Someone was saying like, um, if Dr. Fauci told you to wear a fan on your head, you'd wear a fan on your head. Like, can you imagine? But it's like, I actually can imagine that. It, well, I mean, they do the face shield. Like you'll see some people that are like really woke and they'll have like, you know, 15 masks and then the face shield. Right. Too. With the glasses. Like, like they already wear glasses. <laughs> I'm like, just, just lit, just be bubble boy. Just be bubble boy. <laughs> There's people that do that yeah. too, like the band that we were posting with the people in like the, I don't even know what those apparatuses were over them, those green apparatuses. I call it mental retardation. I fully agree with you there. 
So I want to ask you a question, and this kind of leads into that. I understand, I think something you posted a few weeks ago, you actually kind of used to be more left-leaning or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm pretty sure you were anti-Trump. Just kind of quickly walk us through like that transition. How did you end up yeah. from there to being like where yeah, you are now? It's just stab in the heart thinking like, <laughs> like how I was. I, I, I can't say I was a liberal. I was just a victim of mainstream media. Um, so... In 2012, I voted for Obama because that was like the cool thing to do. Like, we're we're gonna beat racism. We're we're gonna win, you know, type of thing. And like, it was cool. It was hip. Every every celebrity was talking about it. Hollywood, like all the people that you, I don't know, like you watch TV, you listen to music. Everybody was saying they're gonna vote for Obama. So it's like, well, if you don't vote for Obama, you're racist. You're stupid. Why would you, you know? So I did that. And then 2016 came around from 2012 to 2016. I knew nothing about politics. I remember trying to Google something and it made no sense. So I just shut the laptop, walked away and never attempted politics from 2012 to 2016. 2016 came around. I used to have fascist book and everyone on there is like, every, everyone on there is a genius. Everybody knows everything about everything. And so it became too political and I did not vote on 20 in 2016. And I promised myself to never vote again and to never get involved in politics because I'm too stupid to understand. And I was like, we're never going to have a right, a uh, righteous leader. They all suck. And I'm too stupid to understand. So that happened in 2016, 2017. It's probably what you're referring to. I found a journal entry from 2017 calling Donald J. Trump a racist, homophobe, sexist. He has too much money to be a politician. I've lost all my faith in, in humanity. What is wrong with this world? And then 2018 came and like I was having casual conversations uh, with one of my friends from school and we're musicians. So we were talking about, you know, filing our taxes and he told me about the tax cuts. And I was like, what tax cut? He goes, President Trump's tax cut. I'm like, I'm like, that did you just make that up? He's like, no, it he enacted the, the tax cut. And I was like, isn't that a good thing? He's like, yeah. I said, so why is that why is this not on the news? And that was like the first red pill. And like from there, drastically, by having more conversations with people and doing my own research over time, I put the pieces together. It wasn't overnight, but it was one of those things where people like me, Ashley, who have walked away from the party, but we've had a level of self-respect to admit to ourselves and to other people that we were wrong, that we were misinformed, that we were miseducated, you know, uneducated. Mm -hmm. So I was able to swallow my, um, my pride and accept that, holy crap, I've been so wrong and so uneducated about these things. I now see the light. So that's, I guess, the shortest version of, of my trans, my transition. <laughs> You know you're a, a trans Republican. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. You're super woke. I'm very woke. Um, so do, would you think, and this is leading into our conversation, do you think that part of the reason I'm kind of going along with what you said, so I think this is what kind of what you're saying, did that come from school, like you're voting for Obama, what, like the misogyny, all the things you said about Trump, was that stuff you were learning in school at the time or was that just what your friends were doing so you thought it was cool? That's a good question. Actually, I don't really remember my teachers talking about politics like that. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't really remember. They, they may have been a little. They may have shown a little bias here and there, but it was one of those things where it was so obvious that you just had to vote for Obama. But like, I don't know. Back then, the, the teachers didn't really show much of their political colors. It was just what you heard, and that's what you saw on Facebook. Like everybody was talking about Obama. And not going to lie, the, the dude, you know, I thought he was very handsome. I used to Photoshop myself in his photos. I'm like, he's a pretty good looking dude. <laughs> I was that person. <laughs> but I had no reason to believe that he was actually a, a, a good president. So you, I feel like you need to post some of those photo, Photoshop. Photos oh, my God, I should. <laughs> <laughs> so <totally> bad. <laughs> 
I feel like I need a t-shirt with like you know Obama on the front of it. That <laughs> <be rad>. <laughs> you could definitely sell those. You know, um, like, so how did your uh, how did your support of Trump and uh, your change to conservatism and then you got into like being sort of an activist? How did that transition you into working for Right Side Broadcasting? Just quickly, we won't spend too much time on this. I know. Yeah, we to um, about, when I when I took my first dose of the red pill in 2018, like I said, it was a, a, a you know a slow transition of figuring things out on my own and putting the pieces together, um, and then I finally came to the realization a year and a half ago or so, like, holy crap, I love this man. This is everybody, this is everything that I look up to. I never had a role model model prior to president Trump. We have like same exact personality. I say it, how it is. He says it, how it is. He doesn't bullshit. I don't bullshit. So, um, so I went to Walter Reed hospital when he was there, when he had COVID and I went the day that he drove by in the motorcade and surprised everybody and then the next day, I wasn't planning to come on his last day when he was being uh, released. And then last minute, like last minute, I was like, all right, fine. I have nothing else to do. I'm done with school. I'm done with my meetings. And I and I went out there. It was like a hour and something drive from here. Within the first two minutes I'm there, I'm already yelling at the fake news. <laughs> and um, I, I gave a few interviews before... Uh, Mike Nificent from Right Side overheard me giving an interview with Breitbart. And then everything else from there was just was history. Awesome. I, I kind of faintly remember you giving an interview. We, me and Mel were talking about it today because you had an Armenian flag, right? Yeah. I remember watching you, but then I don't like Mel. I remember you had, I don't know, Mel had told me the other day, like, you know, that they found her at Walter Reed. And I was like, now that I think of it, I remember her interviewing, but I never realized that even like after, so this was after I met you in Rome and everything. Like I never yeah. realized that you were that person. Yeah. Anyways. That's really funny that you remember that. I took the flag because the day before that I went, I saw a lot of international flags, like people showing their support from different parts of the country. And I was like, that's actually a really good idea. And Unfortunately enough, my country was in war at that time. So I was like, not only can I sport my support as an Armenian, but I also want to show like, you know, I, I, I want them to see the flag, like stand out from all the other flags and, and like, you know, I don't know, give us attention for what's going on. So. So on that, tell us, I know there's a lot going on there and I believe you're going next month, right? Uh, over April. There? Yeah. April? Like I'm thinking in, end of April. Okay. So just explain to us, because I myself want to be educated on the topic, and I know a lot of people in my audience probably would like to know as well, just kind of walk us through what is happening there, because I think we should be aware of that. Yeah, so um, a war broke out in the South Caucasus region. Um, so I don't want to get like, this can be like a 34 hour conversation, but to like shorten it to a few seconds. Um uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey started a war with Armenia. Um, we're already victims of the 1915 Armenian genocide committed by the Turks. They killed 1.5 million Armenians, uh, Greeks, and Syrians. And um, they took full opportunity of the fact that President Trump was ill and that we have the most historical election coming around the corner and nobody would have their eyes on us in that region at all. And my country has been suffering COVID really badly. So these uh, these bastards took advantage of that time and that opportunity to attack us out of nowhere. And so it went on for 45 days. And we, as that we know of, we lost over 4,000 um, soldiers, many of whom were just teenagers. They were 18, 19, 20 year old kids. I had family fighting. And every day we didn't go to sleep. My family and I, we lost weight. We lost sleep. We lost sanity. We lost our hair. We lost our appetite. At the same time, you're like trying to fight for everything that's going on in this country. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's hard for me to say, cause I'm not over there right now, but it's just, you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. It was a modern day massacre and the whole world mm -hmm. just watched silently. So that was like the biggest, like that was the most painful thing ever. 
So, and you know, just like, um, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to victimize us, but like the white farmers getting massacred in South Africa or Christians getting massacred in, um, which country was it? Um, uh, shoot, was it Ethiopia? I don't remember something around that time frame. So like there was crap happening all over the world that no one was paying attention to Nigeria too, like everywhere something was happening and it was just. Yeah, hor uh, like last year was just a horrible year, so. And honestly, the sad thing is, I don't even remember hearing about this on the news. Like, was, mm -hmm. was I just missing it or was the news not covering it? They weren't covering it. That's why when I talked about it on Right Side, um, which I'm so grateful for my boss allowing me to do that, when I covered it, like, like every like every single Armenian from California started to follow me because they were like, what? Somebody actually talked about us? So... In California, there were like local um, news stations that covered it and they covered the protests and stuff, but nothing on a mass scale. That's that, that's terrible. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Is there anything if people want to help with that situation? Is there are there any organizations that you work with or anything that you know of? Um, I will be sharing that information later on. Um, it's just very like everything is scattered right now. And like people are having a hard time trusting the government and like where to send their money. So yeah. when I go and I work with an organization, I'll be sharing that information. Yeah, do that. And you guys, we're, we'll get to this at the end of the show as well. But her screen name is on her video and that's on her Instagram. So you guys make sure and follow her because she shares information about that. And then the main topic that we're going into tonight is the absolute chaos and disaster that's in our education system. Uh, Lilith's an great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lilith's an amazing school teacher. I've seen some of the videos that she's posted teaching her kids virtually and everything. And she's an advocate for not only kids and their families, but for other teachers as well. And so I know she has a lot of good information to share. Um, to start off that topic, Lilith, what would you say? I mean, I guess there's so much to that conversation, but just mm -hmm. what is your, what is the main issue like in our school system? Let's just start there and just, I mean, there's a lot, I know. Yeah. I mean, the, the centralized issue is indoctrination and that's a like much larger web. So this, the big bubble is indoctrination. And then within the bubble, you have politics, uh, uh, sex ed, uh, gender identity and, and, and gender fluidity and LGBT QRS, TUV plus minus and, um, uh, boys being able to go into the girls' bathroom and the locker rooms and uh, uh, kids, you know, you can't tell the kids to stand up for the pledge anymore. Uh, classes removing the American flag and removing the pledge. Uh, you know, like, so the big bubble is indoctrination. And then when you dig a little bit deeper, there's a lot more to it. Um, so would would you say, I mean, what what is the worst thing that you've seen in school? Like, I know that there's indoctrination, like, are they, I mean, to, down to what age are they pushing these things? Like I've seen surveys where they're asking like kindergartners, like, do you feel like you're yeah. transgender? Like, is that something that yeah. you've personally witnessed and seen this? Tell us a little bit of like some of the things that you've seen them pushing on kids. I personally haven't seen that um, in, in my classes or for teachers that I have covered, but uh, my followers send me a lot of things like, hey, my three-year-old in daycare uh, was having this book about uh, gender identity read to them. So like it's happening, not as young as five, but even three. Uh, what's the worst thing that I have seen? I think the worst that I've experienced is just the lack of consequences. Um, the worst is in, in high school. And I mean, at that, t at that point, it's already too late. Like if they got away with it in element elementary school, and they got away with it in middle school. High school is like, okay, there's not much you can tell these kids because they know they can get away with it. And once the kids know that they can trample over the administration and over the schools and over the teachers, there's really not much you can do to stop them unless you, uh, you just build a very strong, patient relationship with them. And then you become that person that those kids trust but outside of your classroom, they are in their own zone and they do their own thing. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think is their end game for teaching this? I mean, I know it's indoctrination, but like, I, I mean, it, it just, it's mind blowing to me that this stuff is happening in our schools. And I know that you've dealt with it firsthand and 
you've been very vocal about that, but like, you, you think it's, what, what do you think is their end game with it? The end game is to create activists, to create little activists. The way, the best way I can explain it is if they can take control over your kids now, they've already impacted your future because these kids that they are manipulating as young as three, four, five, they are going to be our future attorneys, uh, district attorneys, lawyers, uh, local elected politicians, house of delegates, uh, president, vice president, uh, congressmen. So if they can like get a hold of your kids now and, and manipulate them to the point where they've convinced your kids, they've already altered your and my lives. Like, even though I don't have kids of my own, they are shaping my future by shaping the, the larger generation, which is the youth. So to answer your question, Ashley, their end game is to create activists. And I, and I think they've been successful at that because look, look at the college age kids now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you look, I left California to move to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and it's a lot more red here, but where I live in Chattanooga, there's two, you know, there's a big university and then a smaller university nearby and it's all blue down there and it's all black lives matter and Antifa and it's all this stuff. And it's like, wow. how, how have we not noticed it getting to this point? I would, I didn't think that would be the case in Chattanooga, really. Oh, yes. It, it's not as bad as California, but it is a lot more liberal than I thought. And I, I, I mean, if you mm -hmm. notice, if you look at the election map, most of the big cities, no matter whether they're in blue or red states, mm -hmm. they went blue in the last elect. I mean, in the last two elections. That's true. Now, now we know, you know, there's some other stuff going on, yeah. but, um, the, they like right now for this is off topic kind of, but like, even like the people that are being elected in Chattanooga, these young people coming up, they're the most radical. We just had a mayor and, and, and city council election. And it's like the most radical young people that are now stepping into these roles. And it's like, I mean, be, just BLM and like all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, that if that's happening in Tennessee, like wow. I can only imagine how, what it's like, I mean, you, you live in a liberal state, Virginia, like yeah. it, it's just crazy how much that they've, infiltrated and so going into our next topic we we can sit here all day and complain and I, i'm big on this and that's why i started this mm -hmm. channel and you're huge on this and that's what i love about you we need to do something about it right like you and i having this conversation is pointless unless we're going to do something about it so what yeah. can parents do if their kids are being in this situation what resources or options do to prevent this or, or you know get their kid out of that situation can they speak up and fight it what are your thoughts on that? Um, look, like your kids are the ones suffering through this firsthand. So if you want, if you have the best intentions for your child and you want to protect them, which should be your number one priority, I'm not saying, you know, pull them out or whatever, but least you can do is speak up for them. And most parents who reach out to me, they say, I don't know how to do it because I don't want my, my child to be blacklisted. I'm like, you have bigger fish to fry mama, because by the time your child is in middle school, they're going to be rooting for socialism. So I like, I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You're the one who went through childbirth. You're the one who knows what's best for your child. If I were you, I would speak the heck up because Look what's happened to the right. We've always just like been complacent. We've just like twiddled our thumbs and, you know, had blind faith in people and blind faith in other things. And it's like, well, that's great. You can still pray about it, but you should also be pro proactive. So when people say trust, trust God, God has a plan. It's like, you know, it's not fair for us to say that about him. We're not the only ones in this world. We're not the only country in this world. We're not the only ones who are suffering through tyranny in this world. Like we need to be be doing something too in order for us to be, um, you know, accepted and for, for us to even have God take a look at us and say, okay, wow, they're fighting really hard. You know, I, I don't know what, what I, I can't speak for God. I, all I'm saying is, if you can't so as little speak up for your child, no matter how many DMs you send me, no matter how many screenshots I share on my stories, it's not going to change anything. All it can do and all it has done at this point is empower other parents to look into it themselves and to maybe, you know, have their eyes and ears peeled, which is great. But um, 
call your schools, email, email the administration, you know, um, if you're looking on resources to pull your kids out from public schools, you can go to publicschoolexit.com and, you know, you can uh, navigate through the different options of how to remove your kid from the public school camps and, you know, form an alliance with local pissed off parents. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I don't care how blue your area is. My area is extremely blue and thousands of families have pulled their kids out from these districts. So it doesn't matter how, you know, blue your area is. These people are ticked off. A lot of them are Democrats. A lot of them are Republican, but they're equally pissed off. So get to know who they are, form an alliance. If you have Facebook, join groups on Facebook. They're all over the place. Your resources are at the you know tip of your fingers. And as long as you can speak up for your child and you know you are there for your child, your child can't speak up for themselves. Um, so if they do, which you know, I don't see why they shouldn't, it's their education. If your child speaks up or the parent speaks up for the child, and you notice a teacher docking their grade or giving them unfair treatment in class, document all of it and report it. They're not going to throw your kid in jail. It's your child. Speak up for them. Right. And that honestly, uh, first of all, your network and Scott Pressler were a huge uh, uh, motivation and inspiration for me starting this channel. But the reason for that is Aww. because I like that you guys speak up and I like Scott Pressler's message of do something. And I'll mm -hmm. be honest, for years. I, I didn't care about like you, I didn't care about politics. Like I, I will be honest and I've never admitted this on mm -hmm. my channel. So I might lose all my conservative followers, but in 2008, I voted for Obama yeah. too. Yeah. I lived in, I had just moved to San Diego and I was like, ah, party mode. And like, <laughs> you know, it's California. And like all my, all my friends were voting for Obama yeah. and they had the bracelets on and the hope shirts. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a cool thing to do. Yeah. And I did no research whatsoever. Yeah. No. I, I didn't, I didn't care. And now I moved to Tennessee and I felt like getting out of California kind of like gave me a voice. And one of the things I, I noticed here, Republicans are way too complacent, mm -hmm. way too complacent. Like one of my friends that moved here from California as well, had a, had a conversation with this lady. We were at a Trump boat parade and he's like, you know, what's happening in, in here in Tennessee? Because like Nashville, Knoxville, um, Nashville, Chattanooga, yeah. they're all blue. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, Tennessee's deep red. It'll always be red. And he's like, but what's happening in the big cities? Well, that's just the big cities. And he's like, right. But the big cities were red once. And she's mm -hmm. like, well, rural Tennessee is red. And he's like, right. But if they can turn the big cities blue, like they can turn rural Tennessee or any other state blue. Yeah. Like, look what happened in Georgia. And mm -hmm. then that's my whole thing. Like, that's why my whole thing is unsilent because I feel like so many people are like, polarized by like the silent majority. And like mm -hmm. you said, I'm just going to pray about it. I'm all for prayer. Like I've seen yeah. prayer work and prayers answered in my own life. Like I'm all yeah. for God, but it's the same thing with like working. Like you don't just sit around and wait for God to pay your rent. Like, well, that's what happened <laughs> with the four years that we had president Trump. Everyone was like, Oh, president Trump will have a plan. Pre president Trump will take care of it. I remember over the summer, this is when I realized, oh my God, the right is actually kind of complacent. I'll just put it that way nicely. Um, over the summer, when literally everything was on fire during the summer of love, people were like, oh yeah, President, like, you know, President Trump has has something up his sleeve, or you know, he's 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 gotta be up to something. And I'm like, you guys don't understand this man can't do and fix everything and everyone, especially overnight. You know, like, I'm not saying that there was anything that we necessarily could have done to have stopped those riots. The best thing we could have done is just like stay away and maybe evacuate so your families don't get hurt. But, you know, a lot of people had that blind faith uh, under President Trump. And I actually wouldn't even be surprised if a lot of people didn't vote in 2020. Because they were like, oh, yeah, he's got it. Oh, yeah, he's totally got it. Yeah, it's true. It's so true that that's the biggest thing I've noticed here. And I'm, and we're going to get back to the education. But I, I've held protests I, um, for like against the mask mandates and everything like that. The second one I held, there was like 15 people confirmed to show up. No one showed up. Mm 
I waited 45 minutes and no one showed up. And it's like, I understand things come up and I get that, right? People did show up at the first one. But yeah. I, in my opinion, like there's nothing more important we can be doing right now than fighting yes. for our freedom. Like if you're going to sit here on the internet and complain all day about how much yes. you hate whatever, like that's me and you sitting here and complaining and being angry about it. We're not accomplishing anything. Yeah. And I admit myself, I've been too complacent. And um, even with like, speaking of like the mask and stuff, like with the whole COVID thing, like the lockdowns and everything I've noticed even recently, like I've been complaining for months and what have I done? So this week. And that last week, I've been calling our governor, calling our mayor every single day and wow. driving them crazy. Like, that's all I can do. And they may not, they may not, the, the secretary may not be giving them the message, but I want to drive that person crazy to the point where they're like, okay, we have to say something about this. And going into that, I know that lockdowns have affected um, schools and mm -hmm. you, you as a teacher and um, just kids in general, like what, what are your thoughts on how? I think the saddest part of the lockdowns is the mental health effects it's having on people. What, what have you seen and what are your thoughts on the mental effects it's having on children being at home away from their friends? When you force a kid to stare at a screen for eight hours a day, they also become a screen. They become mm. totally like emotionless. If that, if that's a word, they, they, they become totally, um, I'm trying to think of how to say it. Like you could do a naked cartwheel in front of them and they wouldn't notice because they're just, they're just like hollow. Like they're, they're dead inside because they have to start a screen all day. I hate staring at a screen. Like I did not stare at a screen for like an hour and a half leading up to this podcast. Cause I was like, I'm going to be staring at a screen. You know, I want to give my eyes a break, but out on top of that, um, you know, having, trying to learn a concept online or trying to make friends online or trying to even have a conversation online, our classes are already really short and kids already have to be, they have to make sure that their microphones are off and that they use a raise hand, um, you know, um, raise hand feature if they have a question, but then, oh wait, you have to transition to math class now. So you got to save your questions for next time. While meantime, like, and, and meanwhile, their their family can't help them because they're in the other room helping their two other siblings who are online. So these kids are just like, all right, no one can help me. I can't help myself. I'm not even understanding this concept. They just want to be in the playground, riding their skateboard, playing with their friends. And they could care less about school. And I told families and my friends from the beginning of this 15 days to slow the curve, Last year, I told them, I said, it does not matter. It's not worth it. You will not learn anything. Now, at that time, did I think that we would be in this situation a year later? Not at all. But even then, at the beginning, I was like, it's not worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how I feel about it. Uh, kids are failing drastically. There are there are thousands of missing kids um, across the country who are not even registered in the school systems anymore. They just haven't shown up to in uh, online school or even hybrid. Um, what else? Um, suicide has gone up. Inflicting self-harm has gone up. Cutting has gone up. Drug abuse has gone up. Domestic abuse has gone up. Um, and the, the biggest thing too, well, suicide, but the, the biggest thing being, you know, this. And well, what do predators like to do? Mm. It's, you know, I um, remember reading statistics back in, back over the summer, like a few months into this. Um, child trafficking, not, not a great, great time for the predators, but like, just, it's a really, it's a really harmful time, like me mental sanity wise, learning wise, and just the overall safety and well being of these kids. Like they are being stripped away like string cheese. Mm. Yeah, that I, I know I read an article, I think it was last week, and I was going to send it to you, but I know a million people probably sent it to you. 
I think it it was it like maybe I'm wrong on the number, but was it like three million kids are missing in the system and not showing up for their classes? It was a huge number, or was it three hundred thousand? Maybe I don't know if it was three million. It was not three million. It was, I it was three with a, with a lot of zeros. I don't think it was. You could send it. It could have been three. I don't think it was 3 million. I would have to see. I that. shared it on my page. I'll have to send it to you. It may not have yeah. been. It was a significant number, though, that I was like, Listen, I wouldn't be surprised concerning. if it was 3 million because if you look at, like, if you break it down into districts, I think there was one district in Tennessee where it was like 7,000 kids that were, you know, like unaccounted for. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was 3 million. And guess, guess who's not talking about this? Our politicians. No. They're not. And it's, and it's, it's Republican. Union. It's Republicans and Democrats. Republicans and Democrats and um and the teacher unions. They don't care. No, they're too busy. They're still talking, they're still talking about George Floyd. I know. BLM, critical race theory. They're worrying about confusing the heck out of our kids. I was telling um, I was telling my friend this today. I'm like, you know, telling telling a kid, like asking a small child, do you feel like you're transgender? Like I have a niece that's seven and a nephew that's three. Like if I asked them that, it would confuse the heck out of them because they don't even like they're seven. He's three. Like then that that kids' minds are so like moldable, I guess, that like if you tell them that, then they're gonna start thinking, Well, am I a girl? Like well, that's don't why. know. That's that's what exactly that's why. why. That's why, like when you asked earlier what's their primary goal, it's to turn them into activists because these kids are easily moldable. Now a lot of them can think for themselves, but, you know, generally at a high school level. But when I was a little kid, when I was little, little, I thought I was a boy. Every time my mom would dress me in skirts or dresses, I'd be like, mom, but I'm a boy. Now, um, can you imagine if my parents like dragged me to the doctors to have my whole body configured and, and hormones and altered and stuff? Like, they're like, oh, whatever, she'll figure it out soon. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's. I mean, my 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 nephew thinks he's Spider Man. He puts on a Spider Man cape, but like, what? is my brother gonna force him to wear that the rest of his life? And like, no, you can't wear boys' clothes. You always have to wear the cape, and you have to shoot webs at people and like really get into their head. Like, it's the parents going along with the schools, and I, it really blows my mind that parents are pushing this, like because they're just as brainwashed, they're just as woke, and they're just as SJW. So yeah. they're pushing it on their kids. So what can parents do in regards to the lockdowns? I mean, because at some places, I don't know how your schools are there. Um, I know here they're open with all these crazy restrictions and the kids have to wear masks. And even that, having to wear the mask, being separated from their friends is still causing, I feel like, mental health issues because it's making them scared of everyone. And and parents, unfortunately, not everyone can pull their kids out of school and, and right. homeschool them. Like, they, they have to work. They have debt and they have yeah. things they have to do. What can parents mm -hmm. do? to help help their kids mental health throughout all this like they obviously need some extra steps need to be taken what would you recommend yeah. that parents do yeah it's a personal sacrifice i mean do i recommend homeschool over public school absolutely do i think you're awful for not being able to do that no um it's a it's a very difficult position that these parents are put in, and it's a more difficult position that that the the parents have to put their children in, knowing that it's not safe for their child to wear a mask, but they have no other option. Um, the best thing that they can do is, you know, maybe opt for a hybrid position if they feel that it would be better for their kid to spend, you know two days or three days a week wearing the mask in school and then two days a week at home not wearing the mask. I don't know. That's a personal decision that the parents have to make. Um, but, you know, continue uh, living a regular daily routine with your kids. Like go to the store together without your mask. Go hiking together without your mask. Um, go look for rocks at the beach, you know, shells on the beach without your mask like go do regular family activities uh on a regular basis to still keep that normal part of their lives sane 
You know, we don't have mm -hmm. to manipulate everything, but, you know, have those conversations with your kids when you pick them back up from school and say, you know, honey, you, you don't have to wear the mask now. Like, it's just a temporary thing in school. It'll be okay. Like, it'll be gone, whatever, you know, just so that they're not, because I've noticed kids, if not so more than parents, um, are, are, are very nervous with the masks. Like, they they immediately put it on. They think that they, if they don't wear it, they're genuinely going to kill their grandma. So having those conversations is, is key, you know? Yeah. You have, you have to instill in them. It, it's the same thing, I guess, with the whole BLM and the critical race theory and the mm -hmm. transgender, like you have to have those conversations with your kid and, and tell and it's okay to say that's not normal because nowadays they want to scare us with, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to cancel you and you're racist and you're hateful and all these things, right? Like you and I experience it. Unfortunately, kids have to experience it. Like, it, yeah, you're, you, we have to be, we have to tell our kids it's not okay. And I think we have to, I mean, empower them to be able to stand up and, and be the odd person out. Unfortunately, that's what we all have to mm -hmm. do nowadays. Yeah, it's up to us. And it's, it's like, if, if not us, then who? If you don't speak up for them, you're allowing the same corrupt system to do the speaking for them. Mm -hmm. And in regard, speaking of if not us, then who? Another point I want to make to everyone watching, and I know Lila is all about this too. If you're not speaking up yet, and I've said this before, if not now, when? Mm -hmm. What does it take for you to go and speak up for your child? What else mm -hmm. do they have to do? Like yeah. we cannot be silent anymore. Like whatever you can do to be present and speak up for this, like Lily can't do it by herself. You guys, she does a lot. Like I said, she's a fireball, but you know, one person here and there, like it's great, but like she's getting numbers. What, what are you waiting for? Like if, Oh, I'm too shy. I'm not political. Well, now we can't do all that. Like now's not the time to say, Oh, I'm not political. Like we don't have that Liberty anymore because we're sitting mm -hmm. here and we're, and we're turning into a communist country. Yeah. I mean, name a time when they've burned children's books and they've burned books and and censored, you know, freedom of the press and censored the former freaking president of the country. Name one. I saw that someone put this on Twitter today. Name one time it's been the good guys doing that. Yeah. Like this isn't going to end well if we don't speak up and we, we have to do it. Our politicians are not going to do it for us. Mm -hmm. God gave us, you know, two ears, a mouth, two eyes, feet to walk down to the school a hands to dial a phone number on our phone, like a mouth to talk. Like we have to use the basic things that God gave us. We, like you said, praying is great, but we need to do action in addition to that. Mm -hmm. So we have two more, uh, two more things to get to. What advice do you have for teachers? Because I know you've made some changes in your life in regards to teaching. What do you have for teachers who are in that situation and maybe afraid to speak up out of fear of losing their job or you know, from a teacher's standpoint. So what advice do you have for them? Gosh, again, like that's a really, I, I can't speak for these teachers um, because it's really difficult because you know that even if you have, you know, two, three other Republican teachers in your school, you are completely outnumbered by your staff. You're outnumbered by your administration. You're outnumbered even by your students. You're outnumbered by your you know, coworkers, your co-teachers. Um, I, it, it really depends on the situation, the severity of the situation and the position that you're in. Um, but again, it's like, if they're asking you to, you know, if they're, if, if it's a mandatory thing, like you are required to teach the kids about, such topic that you don't agree with, whether it's a personal disagreement, political disagreement, or it's a religious disagreement, you are a teacher. They're forcing you to teach these kids a certain way and a certain thing. If you feel uneasy about it, you know, send an email to your, uh, send an email to your school, not confrontational at all, or, you know, go in and speak with them, but, you know, make sure you document you know, everything, because if, if they try to throw you under the bus for something you didn't say, and you don't have it documented, then you can't save your, your, your behind. So that's a really tough question. Um, 
it's one thing for students to speak up. It's one thing for parents to speak, speak up. Our job of speaking up will be immensely easier if parents speak up <laughs> because we already feel very isolated from, from receiving, uh, you know, like-minded people. So if, if, if we know our students don't agree with us, if we know our principal doesn't agree with us, if we know our staff doesn't agree with us, and we also know that our parents don't disagree with us, it, it, teachers would rather quit than say something. So if parents speak up, then we're like, okay, we, some, some people have our back, you know, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll summon some courage to send an email or something like that. Yeah. That's so true. Um, we have, a, do you mind taking a couple of questions from people on Facebook? We have sure, a couple go of good it. questions. Okay. I'm going to read a couple of them to you. I'm an old lady and I don't have my glasses. So let me try to read these. <laughs> I have a family member that is a high school teacher in Washington state and is one of the very few pushing back on all this liberalism crap that they are trying to put on the teachers, such as not referring to kids as he, she, et cetera. Are you teaching back in school? And do you find that you are one of the few, uh, well, like we, I guess, I guess we just kind of address this, but are you to find that you're one of the few to push back and not to conform to this liberal BS? Yeah. So Washington state is different. Virginia will be, uh, doing that same thing too, where if the, even if the parent doesn't call their child by their pronouns, the school will, will remove the child from their home through CPS. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Like I just, that's one of the things, like if you're, if, if you're like, this goes against my personal belief and this goes against my religious belief, uh, maybe, maybe you don't even have to say anything to anyone. It's your classroom. It's your rules. It's your kids. And unless a kid goes and complains behind your back and they bring it back to you, then maybe then you decide how you want to dress that individual or that specific topic. But until then, it's your classroom. You don't have to I, I don't know. I, I have to be very careful with what I have to say. All I'm going to say, it's your classroom. Um, and Godspeed. <laughs> it's, I really don't. And like, I, I, I feel for this teacher and I, I wish I, I had an answer for you, but sadly I don't have an answer for everything. No, you're, it's, I, I understand. It's, I mean, there's some things you have, you kind of have to choose. Do you want to keep teaching like because you're gonna have to deal with this in that in that field mm -hmm. um another question what age do you this is from sandy sandy's an amazing a top fan of my channel what age do you recommend to talk to your kids about this transgender mess to talk to them as in to teach them about it i guess like to tell them it's not okay like to start well letting them it know depends that, like, on it yeah, I mean, it depends on what age the school decides to infiltrate their mind with that idea. Yeah. If That's they, true. you know, if your six-year-old comes home one day and says, mommy, daddy, I think I'm transgender, then you've got your uh, problem and it's probably now the time to address it to them. So. Well, I think not even just the schools, but like it's, it's so everywhere. Um, <sighs> Yeah. kids are probably just hearing it from their friends at this point. Like everyone, mm -hmm. you know, you're not cool. It's not okay to be a boy or a girl because there's 457 million genders and you can just mm -hmm. flow and be whatever you want. And yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, some parents are probably pushing it on their kids at the young age. So they may hear it from a friend at the park or, you know, it's, it's sad that they, yeah. they why do we have to sexualize everything with our children? Like that, it honestly disgusts mm -hmm. me. It yeah, just keep your eyes mind. peeled, keep your ears peeled, you know, check up on your kids and their homework and what they're doing, what they're learning. And, you know, if they have a phone, you have to be very, uh, you know, have your eyes on that too. So. Okay. One last thing. And this, uh, you, I know a goal of yours is to start the Donald Trump school of excellence. <laughs> what, and you can go into as much detail as you want. What is your vision for that? Like, what, what, what I literally, I have so many ideas for it. And it's going to take me a very long time to make that a reality and a 
crap ton of money. So hopefully he can lend me a, I remember he said, my father lent me a small loan of $1 million. <laughs> No, maybe, maybe if I reach out to him, he can loan me some money to start up the school for him too. Okay, um, wait, you just sounded more like Trump than Trump does. <laughs> Where um, has that been, Lilith? You need to, you need to broadcast <laughs> from RSBN in that voice. <laughs> that was oh, amazing. No. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, you're good. Um, yeah, it would just be a patriotic school. I mean, it would just, I, I don't even want to say patriotic. It would just be a regular school. Like, I can't even call the schools that we have nowadays school. So it's just what school used to be when you and I were in school. You showed up, you did the pledge, you sat down, you behaved well, or there were consequences. You learned about the country, you learned about the songs, you learned about the wars. Uh, you learned how to treat each other respectfully. You learned about consequences. You learned about responsibilities. You learned how to fail a million times and try a million times harder to do, to do better next time. And, you know, it's just going to be a place for kids that don't have to worry about, am I a boy or a girl? Because mm. you probably already know whether you are a boy or a girl. There's no need for that confusion. There will be two separate bathrooms and there will be two separate locker rooms. And there will be the American flag in every single classroom. <laughs> um, what a concept. Yeah. I know. It just blows your mind, right? <laughs> I, I think if you would have told me even like, let's say two years ago, that we just wanting to have, you know, I don't know, respect our flag, be proud to be a girl, be proud to be white, uh, be proud to be, you know, Armenian, be proud to be Hispanic or whatever it is. Like I posted something on TikTok and, and it hasn't gotten taken down yet. Like I got more video. I got three videos taken down today, but I posted something Ooh. that said, no one's going to make me feel less about who I am. And no one's going to tell me I need to be less of the color of my skin. I love the color of my skin. And if you're black or brown or whatever, you should feel the same way too. Don't let anyone ever make you feel less than because the color of your skin and anyone who does is a hateful racist bigot. I said that, right? I'm getting called a white supremacist racist for saying that. That's how brainwashed people are. TikTok, and I put it on um, Instagram as well. But yes, on TikTok. My people on TikTok are, it's a whole new world of people on there. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting called a racist for telling people of all skin color, not be ashamed of who you are and what race you are. You should love your race and you should love the color of your skin. And I'm the racist for saying that. That's where we're at in 2021. Yeah. It's because you mentioned the word white. I mean, how dare you? I know. How, how dare what the heck I, were you thinking? Huh? I said, what the heck were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm a white you, female. I'm not transgender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One last thing. Uh, I know that you are, we have people that watch from Virginia and I know that you are doing your tutoring thing now. And I know you're on social media. Tell people how can they have you tutor their kids if they're in your area? How can they find you on social media? Are you taking donations for anything that you're doing? However they can contact you, tell them. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram, Teachers for Trump, how you see on the screen. You can also find me on Gab. I'm not using Gab until um, they remove me from Instagram. I just have my account on Gab, like, ready to go once they zuck me from Instagram. So you can find me on Gab. Um, if you're looking for a tutor, if you're in Northern Virginia, you can go to podsmatch.com and you can find my information if you click on teachers. If you're not in Virginia and you're looking for somebody to tutor your kids, go to podsmatch.com and filter in your state and you can find, you know, uh, teachers locally who will homeschool your kids, tutor your kids, whatever you need. And um, I'm actually go going to be launching uh, some merchandise within the next few days. Um, so that'll be the, that'll be the next big thing. <laughs> That's so exciting. Yeah. We need to talk yeah, about I'll that because I'm actually, this is the first time I'm saying this on the show, but I'm actually uh, looking into that as well, launching my own line Good of merchandise. For you. So, yeah, yes. this, is, um, this is just a sneak peek of what it's going to be. Make education great again. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Did you design that? Huh? Did you design that? I sure did. That's awesome. I, I'm going to, so I'm going to, so I'm so buying one. So <laughs> let me know when it's up. 
you're so funny. You're so supportive. Like, like I remember with the whole my pillow thing. You're like, I'm I'm snuggled up in bed with my my pillow, watching this on right side. I'm like, you go, girl. <laughs> Well, because, you know, my thing is, I like to support good people and I love supporting people who aren't afraid to speak up. Like, like you said, you're mm -hmm. a lot like President Trump, where like mm -hmm. you have no filter. I'm the same way. Like, I'm not afraid. And I didn't I always used to be like that, but I'm not afraid to speak up. People that watch my channel know I have no filter. That's why they keep taking my videos good. down because I don't know how to censor myself. I just spew whatever comes out of my mouth. Um, but I, I respect people so much. And like, not only that, but I just, I just think like, like I met, okay. So Mel and I met you and Liz, uh, in Rome for the first time. Rome. We've been watching your guys for a little while, but just think about, and you guys we're done with the main topic now. So if you're bored with this, by all means, you, you're more than welcome to go. <laughs> um, but I, I just, I feel really like a bond with just true American patriots because since the look at everything that's happened. And I feel like those of us who are true patriots, like look what we've been through together over the past few months. And it creates like, I don't know, for me, it creates like a bond with us. Like, I feel like my friends at Right Side Broadcasting are like my family. Like I do. I, I just, and, and it's not just you guys, it's fellow patriots because we all, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been called white supremacists together. We've been called racist together. Like mm -hmm. we stood up for election integrity together. We went to DC multiple times, like multiple mm -hmm. rallies, like, you form a bond with the people that you meet in line and the people yeah. that you talk to because we're being we're being blatantly discriminated against like we're being looked at at the enemy and we need each other we have to we have to stick together and that's yeah. community is so important to me and when i see people who are real i can't do fake like when i see people yeah. who are, are real people like i'm drawn to that and i i will do like i'm a very loyal person too you've probably seen mm -hmm. me go on and defend you guys multiple times because i I don't care if people say things about me, but when you mess with my friends and when you mess with people that I know good people, I guess I kind of take it personal because I, I just like good people. And I, and yeah. I, and I feel like, I guess this comes from me being a super loyal person, but yeah, like I, I just feel like I share this bond. Like there's so many Patriots all over the country that I talk to almost on a daily basis that I've met through the rallies and stuff. And it's like, unless you've gone through the stuff, like I'm called, I mean, literally, literally Lilith. And I know a lot, we, Daily, I'm called fat, ugly, racist, um, Down syndrome patient, inbred. Like, and those things don't hurt me. Take it as all, a compliment. I At do. This point, all those things are compliments because they have out, like, they have used those terms so much. There is no longer a definition attached to it. So mm -hmm. I'd be like, hey, you know what? Thank you. Welcome to the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. No, I I do, and it it doesn't bother me, but. I know that we all know what that's like. And unless, I guess, unless mm -hmm. you've and I'm not trying to victimize us at all because we're all strong right, people, for sure. but I feel like we're all family. Basically what I'm saying, we're all a Patriot yes. family. And so I am super supportive. Like when I, when I like what you're doing, like people on my channel know, I think I shout out right side broadcasting and almost every single live video because you guys inspired <laughs> me. You. you guys inspired me. You guys inspired me to do what I do. Like you see yeah, you guys go out sweet. there in the midst of the swamp and in the midst of the fake news and not be ashamed to stand there and speak truth. Like that takes gut sometimes like being mm -hmm. in the midst of like the swamp is dirty. You guys know you, you deal with the news people like, and the fact that you guys aren't ashamed to, to tell the truth in, in a, in, in a very corrupt industry. Like I respect all of you guys so much for that. So yes, I am always going to be supportive of we that. Appreciate your I like support. to support good people. Absolutely. You're a very loyal fan of ours. So we do appreciate it. Yes. And I will always be a loyal fan of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you guys are all great people too. It's not just the network. Like I know most of you guys individually and you guys are all fantastic, real patriots. And I respect we that so much. That. And I've learned a we lot. Like I've learned a lot about what I do from watching you guys and watching, you know, well, keep it up. You have a great you flow and you're confident and you're very passionate. So Heck, take everything else with a compliment and just know that the more hate you receive, it just means that you're doing something right because these people took time out of their day to come to your page. Like, welcome. <laughs> so oh, they keep, do. keep doing it. <laughs> they do.
Thank you so much, Lilith, for being on. I am so excited. Yeah. You're technically my first guest outside of my brother. My brother's a pastor, so he was on Yay! last week. So uh, you, I'm going to ask you after what your experience was like, because I want you to give me feedback. I'm just learning the ropes. So I appreciate you uh, caring enough about me and my channel to come on and caring enough about the truth to spread it, because we need more people to keep speaking up. Um, you inspire me with your your realness. So I'm so blessed and honored to have you on the show. And Thank hopefully you so I'll be much. able to hopefully I'll be able to have you back on in the future because I really for enjoy sure. this conversation. Thank and thank me you too. guys so much. Thank you for watching on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and the audio from this will be stripped and put onto my podcast. You can find it. It's called Unsilent Podcast. Anywhere uh, you listen to podcasts, if you listen on Apple. Leave me a review if you like it. If you don't, message me and we'll work it out and then leave me a review. Um, <laughs> and feel free to share and like this video. We need to get Lilith's message out. Follow her on social media. You guys support what she's doing. When her merch comes out, I will be posting the information so you guys can support her because we need to support fellow patriots um, and we need to support what she's doing. So you guys make sure if you're on Instagram, go and follow her and support her. Thanks again, Lilith. Uh, everyone on Thank my you. channel, I love you guys so much and I will talk to you guys uh this coming tuesday night thanks uh, thanks everyone have a good night <laughs>